Hi everyone, welcome. In this demonstration, I'm going to look at the concept of basic filter flow in Power BI models using a very simple relational data set and some basic DAX functions. My data was actually extracted from the Maven's Toys data set. I'll put a link in to the full set in the description below. And if anyone wants a copy of the data I'm using at the minute, just let me know. I find having this concept in the back of my mind helps me in my thought process when I'm creating more complicated DAX or building visuals, and it helps minimize any errors occurring in, what I, in my work. I thought it might be useful to share. Also, if you hang around to the end, you may see a sneak peek at a more complex use of the SUMX and related functions. Okay, to start, Let's look at the data files themselves. One is a sales sample listing product names, units sold, and a sale ID number. You may commonly know this as a fact table and that these types of tables are usually on the many side of any relational model, as they are usually some kind of repeated transactional data. In this case, we have multiple sales of different products. The other is a product sample, which provides a simple list of each distinct product, its category, cost, and retail price. As this has distinct lists of products, you may commonly know this as a lookup table, and these are usually placed on the one side of, of a relational model. If we import these two files into Power BI, we can create a simple model as shown here. We have created a one-to-many relationship using the product name columns as the connector. For the purpose of this simple demonstration, we have two sets of sales listed for each product. I have done this so it's easier to visualize what is happening when we apply DAX to our data. The real data set contains hundreds or even thousands of line items, but that wouldn't be useful here. You can see here that the filter flows from the one side, i.e. the product sample, to the many side, which is the seal sample. So let us jump into the Power BI platform to look at our first scenario. We want to know how many units of each product have been sold. To do this, we create a simple DAX measure in our sales sample table on the many side or the fact, side, fact table, just called the number of units, which is simply the sum of the units column. If I then create two matrices and use the product name row context on each, let's see what happens when I include the number of units measure in each. We get the same result for each row and for the total. This may not be a surprise, but let's look at why this is happening by looking at the two different data tables. For the first matrix, the row context is from the product sample and the measure is from the sales sample. If I look at the row context filter from the table for the first line item action figure, and follow the relational model flow down to the, sam the samples table, I will see two lines containing action figure. The sum of the units for those corresponding lines is equal to three. And that is how our figure is returned on the matrix table. The same concept is followed for each product name as shown. For the second matrix, the row context and the number of units measure are both from the fact table. Therefore, the output matrix is a relatively simple summation. There are no relational model flows to consider here. Next, we move on to the second scenario, which looks at creating a measure in the lookup table. I've created a distinct count measure looking at the distinct number of categories in the lookup table. As before, I will create two matrices 
using the product name row context on each. The top matrix uses the product name from the product sample and the bottom matrix uses the product name from the sales sample. Do you think we will get the same number of categories returned in each matrix? Let's see. Okay, so we're getting different results here. Why is that? Well, on the second table, the filter row context is not able to pass from the many side of the fact table to the one side of the lookup table as it goes against the flow of the relational model. Let's look and see how this visualizes. Similar to the previous example, having the row filter context and the measure created from the same table provides a simple output, showing each product is governed by a single category, and there are a total of three categories overall. However, if we look at the second matrix, as, men as mentioned before, the filter cannot actually flow from the many side to the one side. Therefore, although the product names are still listed on the matrix, the value does not have any filter context and just returns the total number of categories for each product, giving us an incorrect answer. This same effect can be seen if we look at the product costs as shown here, where the product cost measure is a part of the lookup table. If we drop the product name in rows and the product cost in the values, you will again see that the row filter from the many side of the model relationship is unable to provide any upstream filtering context. So there you go, a short simple introduction to the concept of filter flow in relational models. And unless you're using more complex stacks, the rule of thumb is that just like water in a stream, filters only flow downstream. This is definitely something to keep in mind when creating models, constructing DACs, and selecting context and values for your visuals. Well, as I hinted earlier, for anyone that's still here, Here's a sneak peek at a look at combining the SUMX iterator and the related function to connect the same two tables to allow the calculation of a total sales cost. I will show you why this only works with this relational model context and not the other way around, like this. And also why a simple multiplication of the two columns does not work. Let me know in the comments below if this would be of interest, and I'll put together a quick walkthrough demonstration. So hit subscribe if that or anything else is of interest. And if there's any questions or comments, drop them in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter or LinkedIn. Thanks for watching and keep taxing.